The diamond diggers, they're all constantly looking over their shoulder. We had heard about these massacres where helicopter gunships had mowed down all these diamond diggers. At one point I was photographing them, suddenly everyone started running. My name's Robin Hammond, I'm a photojournalist. So I started this project, Where Love is Illegal, in 2014, documenting the discrimination that LGBTQI plus folks face. I've documented stories from 14 different countries around the world. This is a photograph of Balchi local government vigilante group in northern Nigeria. I heard about four young men in the north of the country who had been arrested for committing same-sex acts. One of the young men told me about how he was attacked by a vigilante group who saw men having sex with men as an evil vice. I knew where some of the vigilantes were hanging out. I simply went up to them and they were quite proud to pose in front of the camera and use their weapons. They thought that what they were doing is providing the service for their community. At the same time, that so-called service meant the um, discrimination and sometimes quite violent acts of bigotry towards young gay men in their neighborhood. This project became this collaboration. I would be working with LGBTQI plus folks and trying my best to interpret their story visually. So this is Sally, and I met Sally in, in Lebanon. And at the time, the so-called Islamic State were controlling much of Syria. And she, with many other LGBT folks and many other uh, Syrians, had, had fled the country and fled ISIS. ISIS were actively hunting down gay men and trans women and executing them. They would often use hookup apps, so they would essentially bait people into, into meeting them and then blindfold them, tie their hands behind their back and, and throw them from a, the tallest building in the city. Sally didn't want to show her face, she felt that it wasn't going to be safe for her, but she also spoke of her gender identity. This photograph, I think, speaks to that, this period of transition she's about to embark on. I worked in St. Petersburg with several LGBT activists who were really outspoken, which was amazing in an environment where they faced such severe discrimination. Dario was one of those activists. She was beaten to near death by a group of men with baseball bats, and she was stabbed and left for dead. She nearly bled out. The knife is the indication of the attack, but also it's a pose of defiance as well. And she wanted to show her face, she wanted to use her name, and she refused to live in fear of the people who had tried to take her life. So I first went to Zimbabwe in 2007. Robert Mugabe was essentially the dictator of the country. I wanted to understand how could a country with these abundant natural resources have a people who are living in such poverty and suffering so much. This is a photo from the Marenghi diamond fields. When they were discovered, lots and lots of people came from all around the country to, to dig for these diamonds. And then, of course, the government realized that they were losing potentially millions of dollars and essentially killed a lot of people in order to make sure they didn't come back. We had heard about these massacres where helicopter gunships mowed down all these diamond diggers. These uh, people were still digging there. So we had traveled to the diamond field to try and find these guys. He's got this large sort of iron pick in his hand which he's using to prise rocks away in search of these diamonds. They're all constantly looking over their shoulder, waiting for the military to turn up. At one point I was photographing them, suddenly everyone started running. It turned out to be a false alarm. Many of them had been witness to their friends being killed by the military. They were really fearful. When I was working in Zimbabwe, the country had one of the lowest life expectancies in the world. So this is Zakaria being bathed by his nephew, who was his primary carer. He's in a, a hospice for people living with HIV AIDS. I really thought it was important that people came away with no illusion that the greed of a, of a few people meant that people were dying. Infrastructure falls apart, health workers are not paid, hospitals are without medication, and this is the result. Just. Three hours after this picture, Zachary had passed away. During a cholera crisis in 2008, thousands of people were dying every day and the grave diggers were extremely busy. They were digging five, six times the normal number of graves as they were before. I remember one mother and father who were burying their child the mother walked through the graveyard with a small bundle. 
I asked if I could photograph while they buried their child and they said no and I just sat with them while they buried their baby. As a photojournalist, obviously our job is to, is to tell the stories, the realities of, of life of people and, and um, how some of those people's lives end. But sometimes it's just not appropriate to tell those stories. In a lot of countries around the world, mental health is, is neg severely neglected. In many sub-Saharan African countries, mental health issues are seen as a spiritual infliction, and so they seek spiritual remedies. I traveled around Ghana visiting healers who were restraining people with chains. This is in a facility of a traditional healer. The woman who runs this facility, she brews her own remedies for people with all kinds of afflictions, from the physical to psychological. This room here is for people who are living with mental health issues and, and drug addiction issues. These young men were keen to have their plight known. They absolutely did not want to be in chains. They did not want to be in this facility. They were brought here mostly by relatives who thought that being here and receiving the traditional medicines would help them. Most of them were pretty clear that it wasn't helping them at all. I was really struck by this young man in particular, really because of the way that he posed. I asked him if I could take his photograph and I think he was lying down at the time and he sat up and he deliberately posed this way for the camera. It's quite humanizing this picture and that's why I took it. So this is Sara, who I met in northern Ghana. She's chained to a tree in a prayer camp. She first developed a mental health condition after she had her last child. She's been brought here by her family members for healing. She wasn't chained at that point, but she tried to run away. When asked, you know, why she tried to run away, she explained that she just wanted to see her baby. I was with my friend and, and partner, Stephen Asante, who's the mental health nurse that I had worked with. Several weeks later, he was able to go back, make sure she was removed from the chain, get her medication, support her into an economic generating activity. Uh, she became a farmer. And with medication and with the income, she was able to start to tackle some of the mental health issues that she was struggling with. Sometimes the work has a happy ending. Society is shaped by the stories we tell, but who gets to tell whose story? And if you're from a marginalized group, often it means that the narrative of your life is controlled by someone else. So the work that I do tries to amplify the voices of marginalized groups, give them the opportunity and the space to be able to take back control of that narrative. I feel like the world would be a much better place if we all had the chance to be authentically represented in the way that we see ourselves.